This is astrologer and parapsychologist Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen coming to you from downtown Orlando, Florida with some thoughts to share about a beautiful and mysterious rose and about a 20th century occultist by the name of Dion Fortune. The rose is called the Rose of Hildesheim. It's thought to be the oldest rose in the world, established about the year 815 by Charlemagne's son, Louis the Pious. The legend goes that King Louis was out hunting and he lost his relics of the Virgin Mary. He was so devastated by this that he prayed and prayed until um, he found the relics and he said that he would build a cathedral on the spot as a token of faith and gratitude. So the Catholic cathedral was built called the Church of St. Michael's. Today it's on UNESCO's list of world heritage sites. The rose has been growing for nearly 2,000 years. It's 69 feet tall and 30 feet wide. Many people feel it looks more like a tree than a rose bush at this point. And it has some very, very interesting historical facts about it that are especially magical. One is that it is a rosa canina, a wild dog rose, and actually is thought to represent sacrifice and denial. It's a very humble rose, unlike these cultivated flowers, which are lucky to live a hundred years or so in a rose garden. The Rose of Hildesheim was completely bombed during World War II, but the roots underneath it lived and sprang again from what was left alive. So it's thought to be a symbol of sacrifice, denial, and the renewal of life and faith. Birds will nest in this and eat the rose hips, the, the round fruit of the rose, the petals and the hips are thought to be a remedy for infections. They have a high level of vitamin C. And of course, herbal cures like this are well, becoming popular more and more in the United States, but always have been used more in Europe. The rose is a symbol of love and beauty. It's related strongly to the Virgin Mary, and the association with the cathedral and the relics may be part of that association with Mary. In the old days, there was a German goddess named Hulda who represented wilderness and winter and supposedly she shook and prayed and had all sorts of white snowflakes arise. She is sacred to women's crafts and turned into the Virgin Mary. The rose um, seems to affect people who visit it. There is a tourist route called the Way of the Rose, in fact, that is actually oriented toward passing through Hildesheim. This is a place in northern Germany in Saxony. There's a poem that was written by Jesse Weston and Jesse Weston lived from 1850 to 1928. She was the daughter of a well-known well tea merchant of the day and an independent scholar. She worked on the Arthurian legends and was especially inspired by those, but she also wrote poems. And this is part of what she wrote about the Rose of Hildesheim. The scent of the May is in the air and its stars on each bough are hung with large blooms and perfume to the wandering breezes flung and the fairies read tread a measure fair, the chime by the bluebells rung. The rose is thought to have been created by Aphrodite in tears she shed over the love for Apollo. And it has a long tie with mysticism all around the world. Astrologically, 
the rose, the white rose is related to the moon and the sign of Cancer, but the pink and the red roses, like the rose of Hildesheim, have a link with the planet Venus. Roses often appear in the coats of arms and in the symbols of mystical organizations, the Rosicrucians, for example. Um, the phrase sub rosa, or under the rose, means discretion or secrecy. And Martin Luther, about 1500 BC, was related to the establishment of the Society of the Inner Light, some of the esoteric wisdom that inspired Dion Fortune to found an esoteric order in the early 20th century. It's kind of all part of the whole and an interesting kind of a study. Fortunately, there is more to the world than um, the mundane five senses might tell us. And in these times of personal and planetary change, I thought that the Rose of Hildesheim might be an especially charming study. This is a copy of Dion Fortune's horoscope. And let's look a little bit at her chart while well, thinking of the Rose, the many hundreds of years, and all the people that have been affected by it. There's a magic there, a magical doorway, and Dion Fortune, one of the most significant contributors to the development of spirituality today, wrote inspirational and instructive metaphysical writings about ceremonial magic, occultism, the Kabbalah, and spiritualism. She was born Violet Mary Firth on the 6th of December, 1890, 2.11 a.m. in Jan Dudno, Wales, into a wealthy upper-middle-class British family. Her paternal grandfather made his fortune in the steel industry in Sheffield, Yorkshire, and it was he who coined the family motto, Dio non fortune, God not fortune, is the translation. Young Violet eventually adopted her nom de plume, her pen name, Dion Fortune, from the family model. Her parents were Christian scientists. Her father, a lawyer and doctor, practiced alternative medicine in his hydrotherapy clinic in North Wales. Dion's mother encouraged her daughter in exploring trance mediumship and psychic healing. Throughout her life, Dion Fortune would return to her parents' home. In her horoscope, this privileged but unconventional and influential family background is indicated by the placement of Jupiter in her birth chart, which is accidentally exalted in her fourth house in the sign of Aquarius. Jupiter is part of a grand trine in the air signs of the zodiac, formed with Mars and Aquarius, her ascendant, Moon, and Uranus in Libra, and a Neptune-Pluto conjunction along with the North Moon node in Gemini. This powerful and favorable astrological pattern reveals great creativity, a progressive outlook, and an ability to attune to higher planes of awareness. Dion Fortune claimed that the concepts she shared were taught to her by spiritual beings called Ascended Masters during deep trance and meditation sessions. Her Sun, Mercury, and Venus are all in Sagittarius in the third house. This shows excellent communication skills, scholarship, including her prolific talent as a writer. She published two books of poetry, as a teenager and her seven metaphysical novels with occult themes and esoteric teachings are drawn from her life experiences. She also established a group which survived her for many years called the Society of the Inner Light with centers in London and Glastonbury. She had a flamboyant, fiery, outspoken personality typical of Sagittarius her assertiveness created friction with many other prominent metaphysical practitioners of her era. Eventually, she retired from group leadership 
to immerse herself in her writing, the moon's twelfth house position, waning in the last quarter in her twelfth house, indicates this. Her Chiron in her tenth house in Leo shows a career focus on health as well as teaching. A lifelong vegetarian, she started a company which sold soy milk products while very young. Saturn in Virgo in the 11th house further describes this interest in health and motivation to share wellness principles with her community. She was also skilled in working with poultry. While still in her teens, she taught caring for poultry at the Horticultural College in Wiltshire, an institution which catered to schooling troubled girls. Sagittarians often have an affinity for animals, hence the ability with poultry. And it was there that she claimed that she became a victim of psychic manipulation by the school's warden, Lilius Hamilton. Following the resulting breakdown, Dion's classical work, Psychic Self-Defense, was written. Her Mars in Aquarius, Trine Uranus, and Libra suggests fascination with psychology. In her 20s, she studied Freud, Adler, and Jung at the University of London while working as a counselor in a mental health clinic. She met the Irish occultist and Freemason Theodore Moriarty, who inspired the character of Dr. Taverner, the heroic figure in Dr. Taverner's Secrets, one of her most popular novels. Her North Node and Pluto in the Ninth House indicate the uplifting and transformative impact the university environment had on her. In 1927, Dion married Dr. Tom Penery Evans. Her Venus is retrograde, suggesting that this was a troubled marriage. They had no children, and it's generally thought that she preferred an unconsummated relationship with the goal of directing the energy of the libido into awakening the kundalini and higher consciousness. The couple honeymooned in Glastonbury, an area related today as kind of a spiritual mecca, and her husband apparently first realized the extent of what the immersion in occultism would mean to their life together. Eventually, he asked for a divorce to marry another woman. With retrograde Neptune in Gemini in her eighth house, opposed by retrograde Venus, Dion had strong passions expressed in secretive, subtle, and unconventional ways. Combined with her natal Libra influences, this suggests seeking an equal balance between male and female energies. Her writings about powerful goddess worship, such as in the Sea Priestess, are an expression of this. During World War II, Dionne Fortune wrote The Magical Battle for Britain, in which she detailed building psychic protection against the negative occult practices shaping Central Europe at the time. In Sybil Leake's book, Diary of a Witch, the famous metaphysical writer Sybil Leake refers to how the witches of England gathered together to focus their powers in turning back the Nazis. Although they succeeded in this work, many great British occultists were destroyed, completely drained of their vitality. This suggests a reference to Dion Fortune's own death. She became very ill in 1945, had to cancel an appearance at an important winter solstice event in December, and she died in London at age 55 on January 6, 1946. Looking again at the astrological placements for Dion Fortune, Violet Mary Firth, um, her son is 13 degrees Sagittarius, 56 minutes, third house. Moon, zero Libra, 48 minutes, 12th house. Mercury, 24 Sagittarius, 21 minutes, third house. Venus, 10 Sagittarius, 52 minutes, retrograde, third house. Mars, 21 Aquarius, 49 minutes, fifth house. 
Jupiter, 9 Aquarius, 15 minutes, 4th house. Saturn, 16 Virgo, 45 minutes in her 11th house. Uranus, 29 Libra, 47 minutes, 1st house. Neptune, 5 Gemini, 9 minutes, retrograde, 8th house. Pluto, 6 Gemini, 45 minutes, retrograde in the 9th house. Chiron, 4 Leo, 6 minutes, retrograde in the 10th house. North Moon Node, 14 Gemini, 42 minutes in the 9th house. Ascendant or Rising Sign, 9 degrees Libra, 28 minutes. Thinking of the mystery of roses, flowers, the spiritual world, how all of this ties in with the greater whole, helps us to appreciate um, the integration of the spiritual mysteries into everyday life.